So this is our third problem dealing with cylindrical and spherical coordinates. Um, this problem we want to evaluate the triple integral over region W of e to the negative x squared plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves in a respective volume, that's a dv, where w is given at by x squared plus y squared plus z squared less than or equal to 4. So I think on a lot of these problems, I see a lot of x squareds, y squareds, z squareds. That makes me think maybe cylindrical or spherical coordinates will work out here. Sometimes you have to make the choice of which one to do. In this particular case here, what I see is a couple things. I see this x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that makes me think, well, that'd be rho squared and spherical. That's a little bit nicer than in uh, rectangular. So let me just write that out here, is that in spherical, we have x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That works out to be rho squared. But if you did that in cylindrical, what you get is just the x squared plus y squared is r squared. Whoops, let's rewrite that whole thing again. x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Then the x squared plus y squared is r squared, and then you have the z squared left over. So if I have this x squared plus y squared, but no plus z squared, that tends to make me think cylindrical, because I have the r squared. But when you have x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that tends to make me think spherical, and that's rho squared. Now there's other factors that can come into play that can change you from one way or the other. One of those things is the region we're integrating over. In our case, what we have is we have another x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So our sort of outer region is really a sphere of radius 2 here. And because it's a sphere, that makes me think spherical. But I get another x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So everything here makes me think, let's do this in spherical. OK. So let's go with that. I'm going to do our bounds. Um, e to the negative. Let's see, x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that's rho squared. And then we take that to the 3 halves. Which seems a little bit scary. It's actually going to work out nice. It would be a fortunate thing that we have the 3 halves here in a bit. And then we need our Jacobian. That's rho squared sine phi. And then we need to pick an order of integration. Often this is set up, well, for one of two reasons. One is to get our integration to work out um, it's actually not going to be an issue here. The other one is to fit sort of our region and get nice bounds. So here, our, this is a sphere that's really nice in spherical coordinates. So it's going to turn out it does not really matter what order we do these in. Um, one thing I might do is do phi first. Here, I guess I'm doing d phi, d theta, d rho. Um, the idea of doing phi first is sometimes these trig functions will integrate to 0. And then sort of you're done because you get 0 and you integrate that. You get 0 from there now. Now, in this particular case, I can tell that I'm not going to get 0, because if I look at the integrand, the function I'm integrating, it's e to something. e to anything is always going to be positive. And so I'm essentially adding up a bunch of positive, well, masses, I guess. Here are a bunch of positive things. So I'm going to get a positive value in the end. So I know that won't happen, but sometimes it's nice to get the trig function to be 0. Now our bounds. Rho, so that starts at 0, and it's going to go out to the outside of the sphere. So I'm just going to draw a circle for the sphere. Rho starts at 0, and sort of you just shoot out wherever you want to be, and you go until you hit this outer function, but that outer function is rho equals 2. So rho goes from 0 to 2. Theta, we're going to rotate all the way around. Theta goes 0 to 2 pi. Phi, phi is going to go, well, from the top, this is phi equals 0. And then phi sort of goes down. If we went out this way, we'd be at phi equals pi over 2. So it's a 90 degree angle. And we keep going down to the bottom. That's at phi equals pi. So pi is the largest phi will be. So we get a really nice um, set of bounds for a sphere here in spherical coordinates. I suppose that makes sense. Um, what's nice about these is all these bounds are just numbers here. So there's no, like, rows or phi's or thetas in the bounds. It generally makes things a little bit easier. OK, now we just need to evaluate our integral. So the first thing I'm going to integrate is the theta. So I get 0 to 2, 0 to 2 pi. I'm going to simplify this thing on the inside as I go. So e to the negative rho squared to the 3 halves. I'm going to multiply those exponents. Whoops, and I'll get e to the negative rho cubed. And I have a rho squared. And now I'm going to integrate sine phi. That integrates to cos negative cosine phi. I'm going to evaluate that from phi equals 0 up to phi equals pi. 
theta d rho, yep. And so I get an integral 0 to 2, 0 to 2 pi, e to the negative rho cubed, my rho squared. When I plug in pi for phi, I get negative cosine of pi, that's negative of negative 1, that turns into a positive 1, cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 0 is 1, so I'm going to subtract a negative 1, I'm going to get another plus 1. So that was the thing where if you could get the signs a little bit different, you might get a 1 minus 1 equals 0. That's why I maybe thought, oh, let's try phi first and see if something nice happens. So d theta d rho. Um, so what I'll get, the 1 plus 1 is a 2. I'm going to integrate from 0 to 2. And then I'm looking at, I'm integrating with respect to theta from 0 to 2 pi, but there's no thetas here. So essentially that means I'm just going to multiply by the length of this interval, which is 2 pi. So I'm going to pick up another 2 pi. We have e to the negative rho cubed, rho squared, d rho. And so what I get is 4 pi, when I do the 2 pi times the 2, and then I need to sort of do an antiderivative. So what I'm going to do is focus on this exponent and think of u as negative rho cubed. And then I have an e to the u, which would integrate to e to the u. But then I need to have du floating around. That's negative 3 rho squared d rho. Well, we've got the rho squared d rho. We're missing this negative 3 here. Um, we can divide by negative 3, sort of multiply and divide by negative 3 to take care of that. So that's no problem here. And you can see this is going to just work out and give us an antiderivative of e to the negative rho cubed over negative 3. And then we're going to evaluate that from rho equals 0 to rho equals 2. And so what we get, let's see, we have a 4 pi over negative 3. And then we can evaluate e to the negative 2 cubed is 8. e to the negative 8. When I plug in a 0, I get e to the 0, which is 1. And maybe a little bit of a simplification I can do with this. I have this negative out inside. I can change the order around on this e to the negative 8 minus 1. So I would tend to write this as 4 pi over 3 basically distribute the negative one and then I switch the order. It's going to work out to be 1 minus e to the negative 8. Now note, I said I was supposed to get a positive answer. e to the negative 8 is 1 over e to the 8. So e to the negative 8 is 1 over e to the 8. e to the 8 is going to be fairly big. Here, that's like 2 to the 8th. Well, bigger than 2 to the or, Sorry. e to the 8th is bigger than 2 to the 8th. 2 to the 8th is, what, 256. This 1 over e to the 8, or the e to the negative 8, is going to be quite small. So this is going to be a positive thing. 1 is going to be much bigger. OK, so that was spherical coordinates. Let's try the original integral in cylindrical. So what we're going to get is a triple integral. Uh, and then we get e to the negative. It was x squared. Let's just rewrite it. Plus y squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And then we had a dv, and we're integrating over that ball here or sphere. So if we go to cylindrical, I'm going to get e to the negative x squared plus y squared. It's going to give me r squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. My Jacobian for cylindrical is r. And now I have to set up some kind of order of integration here. So I'm just going to write, how about dr, d theta, dz here. We can change these around here once we set the bounds here. But actually, I'm not going to worry about that too much because I'm going to have trouble integrating these. So theta. I can integrate this theta here. Because there's no theta here, that's just going to be a multiply by. It'll end up being 0 to 2 pi here. So that's no problem. But it doesn't sort of change anything. I don't get any extra variables. If I try and integrate with respect to z here, so the dz, OK, I've got e to the negative r squared plus z squared, 3 halves. Maybe I could let u equal z squared or r squared plus z squared. But then du would be 2z dz. But I don't have a z out in front. So I don't see what to do to integrate this integrand here with respect to z, this function with respect to z. So eh, I don't really like that. So r on the inside, let's try that. Well, I could let u maybe be r squared plus z squared. And then I let du be 2r dr. I've got the r outside. That feels good. But then what I get is this function in here works out to be e to the negative u cubed. Or no, u, whoops. e to the negative u, not just cubed, let's get rid of that, e to negative u to the 3 halves. 
Now the issue is I don't know how to integrate that at all. So what happens here is it turns out that in cylindrical, you could write down the bounds of a sphere. It's not that bad. It's going to look worse than spherical. You get some square roots. But I don't even know how to integrate this function anyway. So this is an example of a problem where I can do this relatively easily in spherical. In cylindrical, it seems like it's just not working at all.